Hi everybody, I'm Jason and I am here at the Science Station inside the Children's Museum Houston to show you a really fun activity called marker chromatography. Now, before I explain to you what marker chromatography is, I want to do a couple of things. I want to let you all know that tomorrow it is the great Dr. Seuss's birthday. And what I'm doing here with marker chromatography, and if you can see I have some markers and water and stuff, you'll see what the activity is in a moment, is to show you how important color was to Dr. Seuss when he drew. Even in the titles of his books, you think of green eggs and ham, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Who doesn't remember the great red and white hat of the cat in the hat? So I want to first give a little bit of a shout out to the great Dr. Seuss because, like I said, tomorrow's his birthday, color was important to him, and this activity has a lot to do with color. Now this activity is being brought to you by MD Anderson, so let's go ahead and give them a big round of applause for allowing me to do this. Oh, and just so you know, I am the science outreach manager here at the museum. I'm also the life science educator. So let's go ahead and talk about this activity really quick. First of all, what is chromatography? What I'm going to say right now is going to seem really long and difficult, but when you see it in action, you'll understand it better. Chromatography is when you separate a mixture through a solution. In this case, my solution is water. Now, if you have a gas mixture, you have to separate it through a suspension of vapor. And when you start this separation, either, either through a solution or a suspension of vapor, you break down the components of the mixture so that they move at different rates. I know, that's a little under, hard to understand, but that's what chromatography is. Now, not too long ago, one of my colleagues, David, did a really fun activity called candy chromatography. He basically took like Skittles and M&Ms and he got them wet and he put them on a piece of filter paper and they separated into different colors. That's the idea. The solution there again was water, but as you saw, as it started to move across the filter paper, different colors moved at different rates. That's the same thing we're going to do here today. We're going to do it really special though. We're going to go ahead and use a filter paper, a coffee filter, made to filter water so your coffee is neither too weak nor too strong. And we're going to use four different black markers, make a mark at the bottom, put them into the solution of water, and see if each marker, because I have different markers for each filter paper, we're going to see if each marker separates the same way. Now here's something really important. This is black. You might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, black is the absence of color. Yes, in the electromagnetic, the electromagnetic spectrum, black is the absence of color. But this is pigment color. This is additive color. Pigments are used to give color a certain brightness, a certain hue, a certain difference between blue and light blue. When you add a bunch of pigments together, you get the color black. So in color, when you're talking about like markers and paint, black is all the colors mixed together or a certain group of colors mixed together or we'll find out which colors that are mixed together when we start this activity. Very, very simple to do this activity. I have four cups of water. Remember, that's my solution. That's going to separate this mixture of colors. I'm going to dip it inside, but I'm not going to cover this black line. I'm going to dip it just underneath. And what's going to happen is, is this filter paper is going to soak up the water and through something called capillary action, it's going to slowly move up the filter paper. And then it's going to hit this line eventually and start to separate the colors. Now, when we do this, you might want to think to yourself, why are certain colors at the top of the filter paper and why are certain colors at the bottom? 
When we are done with the experiment, we'll explain that. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you how to put one filter paper inside. And then I'm gonna magically have all four in. It's called the magic of editing. And then we're gonna let it go for a moment and I'm gonna come back and show you all the different colors and explain what each marker is so you know what we did, okay? So here we go. You got one, we're gonna dip it inside. Remember, do not get the whole line wet. We're gonna dip it, dip it, dip it, right about there. And then we're gonna clip it so it doesn't move and we're gonna let it go. I'm gonna move it around. So Henry, I'm gonna put a little bit lower. There we go, that should work out. And if we're lucky, we might see it start to separate just a little bit as Henry's getting this close up here. But we're gonna do that with all four of the different filter papers. So we're gonna put this one in here, and the next one in here, and the next one in here. And when we come back, they'll have them all, we'll see them all, and we'll see the results. So, be right back. I'm back. Look, magic, like we said. All of them are together. Actually, no, it's editing. It's science. So, let's talk about what's going on here. I'm gonna tell you what each marker is per cup, and then we're gonna talk about what's happening within the paper in the cup. So, in the first cup here, I used a Sharpie, which is a permanent marker. Remember that word, permanent. Then, I used a Crayola black marker. Okay, you probably used Crayola markers before. You get some on your hand, it washes off pretty easily, right? Keep that in mind. Then I use something called a dry erase marker. Dry erase markers, you have to use those sort of fuzzy erasers to get rid of it. Might seem a little permanent as well, more like semi-permanent. And then I used in a wet erase marker, which you have to spray water on it to get rid of it. So you'll notice that the two permanent markers, nothing happened. The water could not absorb into the ink of these pens enough to make them separate. Or we just haven't had enough time to see them separate. Maybe 20 minutes from now, we'll have something. But what's interesting is to note that different markers do different things. Now look, you would think that these two markers that it react with water, the same colors would come out, but they didn't. If you look, you have this sort of magenta color, then a very light yellowish green color, then you have cyan. Now, remember what I asked you earlier, why is cyan at the top and magenta at the bottom? Because the pigment for cyan is lighter. And so it moves the paper more. And then over here, it's starting to do some very interesting things. You have this sort of greenish moldy color at the bottom, sort of this yellowish, I'm gonna say it looks like a booger at the bottom, okay? Then you get this sort of brownish reddish mix, and then you get like a very dark, what looks like purple, and then at the very top, if you look real carefully where my finger is, you get blue. So some very interesting things have happened and the idea about chromatography separating different things usually results in different results. So that's why when you do this, you wanna use all kinds of different markers. Now, are you only supposed to use black markers when you do chromatography? No, red markers actually have different pigments in them. Yellow, blue. There's marker sets that have 128 different colors. You could do this for every single color and see what happens. I just like doing this uh, all black one to show you how different different black ones are. It's, very an it's a very interesting thing to me. So, if you're at home and you decide to do this marker chromatography activity with all kinds of different markers, please take a picture of what you have done and post it on our social media sites. We have Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And you can put up pictures of all these different uh, chromatography experiments that you conduct and we'll like it and tag you and make you a superstar, okay? If you're watching this on YouTube, please do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button, that red button to the right. 
The reason why I want you to hit that is so you can get notifications of all our different videos. We have our Tater Tot Tot Tunes, we have other science videos, we have story times, and we have Mr. O's Oh Wow Moments. With that, I am going to say my farewells for now. I do hope you're having a good day, and I really hope to see you soon. Have a great one, everybody.